Hey guys, uh, it's gonna be hard to shoot this morning because it's really dark outside. We've got, uh, uh, I'll try and walk over here. Oh, stop, hold still, okay. All right, so I wanted to talk about canning jars. Sometimes something goes bad in canning jars and, um, or like me, you can have things like pickle jars. Hold still, Julie, don't move the camera pickle jars and I want to be able to use them because mason jars are expensive. Now I won't use these for canning but I do use them to store food in. I always try to purchase glass rather than plastic because you can use it forever. Just make sure to keep the lids. So what I'm going to do is this is a clean jar. I have washed it. Good morning Daniel. Good, good morning Mandy Lynn. I have to hold really really still or my light's going to change. So this is a pickle jar. This here, this pot, is my hot water pot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it up to a boil. I'm going to try really to move really slow so you can see this, but still have the light not up. Oh, the light's changing. Okay, I'm going to try and do it from the distance. The water is only warm right now. They're both about the same temperature. So I'm going to dip it, put a little bit of water in it, and then I'm going to settle it down in there. And I'm going to go get my other one. Okay, we can do this. So the thing is, Botulism is real, bacteria is real, you don't want it in your, where's that spot where you could see, all those things are real and so you do want to sterilize your jars and if you're off grid and you don't have a dishwasher you can do the sterilize um, setting on your dishwasher to sterilize your jars but make sure they're clean first, you don't want to have food inside of them, nothing like that. Sandra said she's scared to can food. Well you don't want to use pickle jars, you want to use mason jars but it's super easy, you can do hot pack canning or you can do pressure canning. If you already use a pressure cooker to have fast food, it's as fast as a microwave or faster. Um, you just want to make sure that all your parts are connected and and uh, pretty much that there's not really anything that can go bad unless you have a dent in your pot or something that but really there's not really anything that can go wrong. The only thing is you don't, if you're canning, you don't want to fast cool it really by putting it in cold water because your jars will crack, crack. But anyway, I, <laughs> I should probably stay focused. All right, so I'm gonna put this one in. Maybe I should have put the other one in first. Um, maybe that's too small. I'm used to my pack, my, uh, my big canning pot. Yeah, I'm not sure those two are going to fit in there next to each other. The point is, what the water that goes into the jar, and the jar needs to be the same temperature as the water when you go in so it doesn't crack. And then what you're going to do, you don't have to use a pressure canner to sterilize your jars. All it takes is steam, hot water, boiling water, and you can do the same thing with washcloths and other things. If you've read a story where it said that they scalded their washcloths, this is what they're doing. They're using super hot water to keep the washcloth from getting nasty kind of like an in-between clean way to do that. Anyway, that's how you do it. So I'm going to let this come to a boil and let those sterilize for a few minutes. And um, anyway, I wanted to, why did I think that was important? <laughs> this morning, what I really wanted to show you, look, this is what an off-grid kitchen looks like when you're trying to make lunch, dinner, breakfast, and sterilized jars. This is really what it looks like. Um, the kitchen is actually clean, but I am using the wood stove as a, as a, a surface for cleaning. Um, the reason I wanted to show you that is because if you ever have to go off grid, use as little water as possible. Um, you want things to be clean, but then you want them to be sterile. Uh, a, in, in the olden days when they had milking equipment, they would sterilize, they would scald the milking equipment every time they used it. And they would scrub it and scald it. It, it wasn't... <clears throat> it wasn't that 150 years ago things were unhygienic. They were just done differently in order to keep people healthy. Still hygienic. They just used a lot of boiling water. So hopefully that was helpful. I might get around to going and showing you the guts of the hotbed we're taking apart today to see what it looks like after three years. Almost four years on that one because it was put together by the woofers. I wanted to show you what the guts look like, how to take it apart, and then how to put it together and which of the hotbeds is my favorite um, variety that I've made. Uh, Mandolin said she's going to a fiber festival in Mulberry, Arkansas. How fun. Hey Luann. Hey Tom. 
So that is my show for this morning. I do have a video that I was working on all day yesterday, but we have good weather to work in right now. It's not raining, but it's nice and cool. So we're trying to get that hot bed taken apart. And I wanted to show you. So that big pot back there, I want to get one more jar into it. We'll see if we can do it. If you don't fill it with water, it's going to float and bob and clink against each other. So it needs something in it to hold it down. But you want to make sure you never put cold water in a hot jar or hot water in a cold jar or anything like that. You don't want to do that because it will break. And sometimes it can be explosive. That's just in general life. That's not canning. That's just glass, heat, cold. You don't want to switch them too quick. So hopefully that was helpful. We'll talk to you later. Only if I can... <laughs>